coming to um, Bothness, Bothness Music Group for a music exchange seminar workshop with um, a wonderful artist, a friend, a mentor to me as well, believe it or not, um, RJ Benjamin. I've known him for over five years and I'll talk a little, little, little bit about him before um, I introduce him on stage. Um, but I'd like to thank um, the Bothness Music Group for getting involved in Music Exchange. It's an NPC. We've been doing this for five years with blood, sweat and tears, had an enormous amount of speakers come out and it's all about empowering artists to the next level, to take them to another level where you understand your craft and your, and your business. Jerome, the manager walking around who says he's a drummer so he doesn't talk, I'll do the talking on his behalf, um, has opened the store, we're gonna be running quarterly workshops or workshops as you deem as you deem fit to try and empower um, artists about the, the next business. I know I see a number of notable musicians in the audience. I'm not going to single people out because I think it's, it's unfair on the other artists who I perhaps don't know in that. But without further ado, mentor to me, a great speaker and a great proponent of music exchange. He was a teacher for those of you who don't know. He's vocal coached literally hundreds of South Africans, um, Clash of the Choirs musical director, Idols musical director on Mentor. He's just vocal coached the winner of um, Idols for the current season. Please, a warm round of applause. He's given up his time, he's given up his time freely. And I think we're in for an inspirational two hours. I know it's gonna be interactive. If you've got questions you want to ask, just raise your hand. I think RJ will help you uh, regarding that. But please, a warm round of applause for a gent, and as they say in the terms, a mensch, RJ Benjamin. Uh, okay, first question. How many people here know what their voice range is? So you know what your lowest note is, and you know what your highest note is. Okay, so there were very few hands that sort of were raised as far as that's concerned. How many people here know what their voice range is today? Aspiring singers. Are you all aspiring singers? Do you all want to be professional singers? Do you want to be recording artists? Okay, so that's already a big start for me, is understanding what your range is. And I think many of us fall into traps, especially when we're performing, when we don't know what our vocal range is. And I don't know if it's happened to you, but I've seen it happen to so many artists, and maybe it's a com com competition scenario, but if you're singing out of your range, you're bound to fall into some kind of trap or make a mistake. And your audience ultimately, it's the same with an actor or an actress. They're waiting for you to make a mistake. I don't know why we do that as human beings, but we're like, ah, I can see they're, they're faking it, or you know, whatever the case may be, bad acting. Or, you know, and, and with singers, it's a very similar scenario. They're waiting for you to make that mistake. Ah, they're not so good, they made a mistake. You know, and ultimately, as singers, we're doing a very similar thing to what actors and actresses do. We are cre creating the illusion that we're perfect. We're creating the illusion that we're seamless. Even if we're one of those singers who's trying to create the illusion that we're a raw vocalist, I don't know, someone like a Lenny Kravitz or you know, something like that, ultimately, we're still creating some kind of illusion with our voice. And understanding your voice, understanding what it does in certain places within your range means you can better create that illusion. A perfect singer does not exist. There is no one on this planet who can do everything absolutely perfectly. What, they, what they've done is they've created that illusion um, and you just haven't heard the mistakes. And that all comes with understanding your voice. Understanding your range is a huge part of that because ultimately that means that you know your limits. You know how high you can go, you know how low you can go, and you know what you need to avoid uh, and ultimately creating that illusion that you're a seamless vocalist. Okay, so the next question is, who here has done scales? Who here has done singing exercises? What is so important about scales? What is so important about that compared to singing a song? So ultimately, when you sing a song, the notes that you sing within that song are usually within one, one key, one scale. You might have a key change somewhere or another. But ultimately, those are the only notes that you're hitting within that scale. Ultimately, if I'm doing a scale, and let's say we're starting there, 
Okay, and let's just say it's a five minute scale. One, two, three, four, five, and then back down, okay? That's one. The next scale, I start a semitone up. So now I'm hitting this note, this note, uh, do re, mi, the, okay? Then I'm going a semitone up, so now I'm starting that note, that note, that note, that note, that note. Every single time, I'm just going in increments slightly higher and higher and higher and higher. You can't do that when you sing a song. That is why scales and technical exercises is so good for strengthening the voice and in particular for warming up the voice. Now, it's very early in the morning, so none of you are probably warm. Okay, so therefore we need to then talk about the importance of warming up. And especially if you're singing early in the morning. I had a performance, when was it? Yesterday or the day before? Two days ago. On espresso. Uh, espresso? Espresso. And I know that as a base, <clears throat> that's my sort of, that's where I sit. That's where I would sing in a choir. It takes my voice a very long time to wake up in the morning. I, I essentially sound like Barry White all day. So, so you can only imagine what I sound like really early in the morning. And I must really scare my fiance. But ultimately, I know it takes my voice a long time to warm up in the morning. And realistically speaking, I should have been probably singing scales all throughout the day. That first song I sang on Expresso, I knew I wasn't warm, truly warm yet. Thankfully, I got to sing two songs, so I sounded much better on the second song. But ultimately, your voice is still asleep in the morning. You've been resting for, on av well, for a lot of people, I'm assuming six hours. Okay? You've been doing nothing. You haven't been talking. You haven't been singing, for sure. Okay? So your voice has been doing nothing for potentially six hours. I assume for some people, if you're lucky enough, eight hours or nine hours or something like that. That's why warm-ups are especially important early in the morning, okay? And you all probably know exactly how you feel early in the morning. And yet, some of us are singing, top of our lungs, blasting away early in the morning. Why is that bad? Well, obviously, it's going to cause damage. It is going to cause damage. You wouldn't go to gym and not stretch. Well, some of us would, but you know that you're going to pay the, you know, pay, you know, pay the price. You're not going to go to gym. Um, and bench press 60 kilograms. Uh, I'm not that strong. Uh, but um, if you haven't actually stretched, you're going to damage something. Why would you want to do that with your voice? Does that make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense. And ultimately, um, if this is something that you plan on being your money maker, because that's really what it is at the end of the day. You want to be a singer, this is your money maker. Why are you going to damage this thing? Why are you going to cause damage on your voice? And the biggest problem we have in South Africa, it might be all around the world, but I can only speak for South Africa, is we're ill-disciplined when it comes to these kind of things. We drink before gigs. We don't warm up before gigs. We certainly don't warm up in the morning. Uh, we don't do ex uh, vocal exercises. And so ultimately, a lot of our recording artists and professional singers shorten their career simply because they didn't look after their voice. And you hear 40-year-olds or 50-year-olds and beyond who sound like 80, 90, 100-year-olds. You know, like, like vocally speaking, there's only so much your voice can take. You've got to treat that instrument right. And I can tell you, I've uh, heard from peers in the industry who, um, who are highly successful. Lyra is a great example because I trained her just before she blew up. And I said to her, you're squeezing out your top notes. You need to go for training. Of course, as it, as it often happens, she blew up. And then you're really busy. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that she didn't want to do it anymore because she thought she was too good. I don't think that was the case. I think she was too busy. But ultimately, after four years of performing every night, every, everywhere, it's going to take toll on your voice, especially if you're not warming up, especially if you actually haven't got the right technique. And ultimately, she called me to say, I've got nodules. What do I do? What should I do? And you don't want to fall into that position because whether you like it or not, and if we look at Lyra as a good ex a local example, if she loses her voice, that's her career gone. She can't release albums. She can't go touring and, and, and singing. Because minus the voice, 
that's what people go watch. They want to hear her singing her, her hits. They, wanna, they don't want to necessarily, yeah, the performance is great and the dancing is great and all that kind of stuff, but it's about the voice. The same would apply for Beyonce. So that's the importance of doing scales, of doing warm-ups, all that kind of thing. What I'm going to explain is this, and we'll, we'll actually run through some warm-up warm exercises now. But ultimately, when you're doing scales, you're not just hitting notes within one key of a song. You're ultimately, especially if you're going up chromatically, does everyone know what that means? Up in semitones and down chromatically. You're hitting every single note within your range. And you can't do that by simply just singing a song, which is why scales are so important. Because they literally, note by note, um, train the voice. And this is where the whole analogy of, I'm going to say, gym versus, or training for a sportsman versus training as a vocalist. The same way you would train as a cricket player has to go and bowl balls in a pitch or, um, you know, for lack of a better, better thought, a boxer has to still go to gym. He has to still put in the, the cardio training, the, the strength training before he just goes and What's that word? What do they call it? I don't know. When he's sparring, that's the word I'm looking for. Sparring against some other guy, okay? And the same things have to happen as a vocalist. You can't simply just sing songs. Singing songs, thank you, okay? Singing songs is basically like going into the, the boxing ring and playing and, and having your, your match, so to speak, you know? And that goes for any sport. Now, the same thing applies with singers. You've got to do the work behind the scenes to improve the work that you do when you're on stage or the work that you do when, when you're in front of an audience or in the studio. It's going to be a little bit crazy to do this right now. So I'm going to do it in, in two ways. I'm going to ask a couple of people to, to, to come up and sing alone, if you're brave enough, okay? Don't worry, nobody's judging you. And that's the important thing about scales. It's not about... Um, how can I say, trying to sound like Whitney Houston when you're singing a scale, okay? Um, it's just about, it's about singing the scale and doing it correctly and using a correct technique. But I want to do this in two ways. So the first way we're going to do is I'm going to get you to sing as a group, okay? I want you to feel the difference when you do that compared to when I get people to sing, to sing separately. And this is another reason why if you do go for vocal training, it's sometimes very important to actually do private vocal training. Because group vocal training, you can hide certain things. You can hide where, the, where your vocal break is. People don't necessarily hear everything you're doing. It's like, it's like listening to a choir. And I've, I've done a, a few reality TV shows with choirs and going to audition choirs. And then I have to sort of pinpoint who the actual good singers are. And they can, you know, a 40 piece choir can, can sing in front of me. It sounds unbelievable. When I get them to sing separately, they all have issues. I might find one good, good singer out of all of that. You can hide away within a group of singers. You can't do that when you're alone. And, and bottom line is you need to find out what is wrong with your voice to fix it. You need to know your strengths. You need to know your weaknesses.